a new lesson from simple biology inheritance part two uh, i assume that you have watched inheritance part one if you didn't go watch inheritance part one and then come back watch inheritance part two in this lesson we will define the terms genotype phenotype homozygous heterozygous dominant and recessive we will predict the results of monohybrid crosses we will calculate phenotypic ratios using a genetic diagram we'll interpret pedigree diagrams for the inheritance of a given characteristic we will explain how to use a test cross to identify an unknown genotype. We will explain codominance by reference to the inheritance of ABO blood groups. And let's start. Looking at these two rabbits, we have a gray rabbit and a white rabbit. As we said before in the previous lesson, the gray and white are two alleles for the gene that codes for the coat color. So a phenotype is the appearance of the, uh, of the organism, is the observable chemical and physical characteristics. And here I can see the gray and the white. Sometimes it's inside the body, still it's a phenotype. So it's the observable features of the organism can be physical or chemical. While the genotype is the genetic makeup of an organism in terms of alleles present. So what are the alleles, the combination of alleles that make this gray color or the combination of alleles that make the white color, this is genotype. And we represent alleles by letters and alleles can be dominant or recessive. So let's, let's take G capital represents the gray allele while uh, G represents, small g represents the white allele. So here we will have capital G, capital G, if it's a pure line. So this is a pure line, pure bred rabbit, gray, like all the parents are gray, the grandparents are gray. So we have a pure line, capital G, capital G, and we have a pure line of white rabbits, small g, and another small g. So since the two alleles are identical, as we said, each letter represents one allele. So these alleles are identical. So one allele from each parent. This is homozygous dominant. Homozygous means two identical alleles. And since it is represented by a capital letter, it's the dominant one. And we always represent the recessive one by small letters. So what is a dominant allele and what's a recessive allele? So the genotype versus phenotype, capital G, capital G, homozygous, gives me gray, capital G, small g, this is heterozygous, hetero means different, hetero means different, homo means same. So different alleles give me also gray, and homozygous, a uh, lowercase g, gives me the yellow, the white colored. This means here, when the dominant allele and the recessive allele are there together, the dominant phenotype appears. So the dominant is an allele that is expressed if it's present. Whenever it's present, it will be expressed. While the recessive allele is the allele that only is expressed when there is no dominant allele of the gene present. So here it's white because there's no dominant allele. When the dominant allele is present, it will show up. So the dominant, it shows up whenever it's present. If it's homozygous or it's heterozygous, will give me the dominant phenotype. Remember, the phenotype is the same here, but the genotype is different. The phenotype here is white and the genotype is homozygous, small g. So let's do some, uh, some, some application here. I have this rabbit homozygous dominant crossing homozygous recessive. So the parents' phenotypes are gray and white. The parents' genotypes are capital G, capital G, small g, and small g. What are the possible gametes that this rabbit can produce? Remember, by meiosis, gametes are made by meiosis. So here we have only one option, either uppercase G or another uppercase G. This means 100% G, capital. And the same case here. The small g, small g has no any other options, only one option, which is small g. So the gamete that the white rabbit can produce here is only small g, and the gamete that can be produced by the gray rabbit here is only big g. 
if this gamete fused by fertilization with this gamete, what are the possible offspring phenotype? Capital G, small g, the gray is dominant, this is white, so the possible phenotypes will be 100% gray because all the genotypes are capital G, small g. And remember, G is dominant, the gray is dominant over the white. So this means all the offspring will be gray rabbits. Another application. Here we have both are gray rabbits, mainly possibly the, the offspring of the first cross, which were heterozygous. So the parent genotypes are capital G, small g. Here we have capital G, small g. What will be the possible gametes from this uh, parent? We have capital, small, either this one or that one. What is the chance of having capital G? What's the chance of having small g? It's the same chance, right? 50-50. So either capital G or small g. The same thing here, 50% capital, 50% white, small. Now, if I want to cross randomly one gamete from this parent, and with another gamete from this parent, what are the possible cases? Since here we have more than two gametes from each parent, we need to use a genetic diagram, and this diagram is called Punnett square. This Punnett square, as you can see, it's a square divided into four squares. We will put the alleles or the, the gametes from one parent on top and one parent on the side. So let's work. We'll put here capital G, small g from this parent, and from this parent, we'll put them on the side, capital G and small g. So if this gamete crosses this gamete, we will end up here with capital G, capital G. And if in here we'll have capital G, small g, just I'm putting them. Again, this small g with the capital, always the capital first. And here we have small g, small g. We have four squares and four possibilities. From these four squares, you have capital G, capital G, or capital G, small g. And so capital G, capital G, this is one out of four. Capital G, small g is two out of four, which is the same as one over two. Small g, small g is one out of four. You can say 25% capital, capital, 50% and 25% small, small. Now, capital G, small g and small g, capital G, small g and capital G, capital G, both they give me gray. So 34 gray and here we will have one out of four white, okay? So the ratio that we can write here, the ratio is three gray, one white. So I can, the ratio, I can write the ratio as three to one ratio. Three to one ratio. Test cross. In a test cross, I have a dominant phenotype. Let's say here we have the gray rabbit. I cannot tell if it's homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant. And the only way to tell the genotype of this rabbit is to cross it with a known genotype. I know the genotype of the white rabbit. The genotype of the white rabbit is absolutely small g, small g. The gray rabbit can be either heterozygous or homozygous dominant. Since the gray is dominant over the white allele, so the gray rabbit in this case will be heterozygous and the white rabbit has no other option. It has to be homozygous recessive. The gray rabbit can give me allele G or allele small g, while the white rabbit can give me only small g allele, the white allele. So if we do the Punnett square here, on one side we put small g from the white rabbit, and here we have either big G or small g. So the genotypes will be capital small, small, small. This means 50%. Uh, gray because it's capital small and 50% white. This is small, small. So from this pedigree, if it was heterozygous, it give me 50-50. So the result of the test cross, if it's 50-50, it 
then the gray rabbit is heterozygous. While in the case of homozygous dominant, the gray allele, the gray rabbit would be homozygous dominant, while the white rabbit is homozygous recessive. And in case we cross them here, only one type of gametes are produced. And if we cross them here, we will have 100% capital G, small g, which is all gray. So if the result is of the test cross is all gray, then the gray rabbit of the unknown genotype is homozygous dominant. Pedigree. Pedigree is a family tree that shows the inheritance of a certain condition from one generation to the next, showing the phenotype. In order to understand the pedigree, we have to understand the key, which is here, the circle, if it's unshaded, this is a normal female, and the square, which is unshaded, that's a normal male, shaded female, shaded circle is a female with the condition, shaded square is male with the condition. So in this pedigree, particularly, we have three generations. This is generation one, this is generation two, and this is generation three. So I have generation one, generation two, and generation three. And this pedigree showing the inheritance of a condition in cats that causes extra toes. The allele that causes the extra toes is a dominant allele. Now, I want you to find out the individuals for the individuals 1, 2, 4, and 14, the genotype of each of these individuals. Assume that capital A is representing the dominant allele, while the small a represents the recessive allele. Individual 1 is a normal male, and in order to be normal, it should not have the dominant allele, because the dominant allele, whenever it's present, it will show up. So this individual 1, it has to be small a, small a. So individual one will be small a, small a, no other choice. If it has one capital A, it would be affected. Individual two is an affected uh, female. And in order to be affected, she has to have a capital A. And what would be the other one? We look at the uh, children. Eight and nine, they are normal. And they must be small a, small a, both of them. So those... I must have inherited a small a from the father he has already and another small a from the mother so the mother has to be heterozygous capital a small a otherwise she could not give eight and nine a normal uh, a small a normal allele which is recessive so it has to be heterozygous individual number four is an affected male again if he's affected, he has at least one capital A. What would be the other allele? If we look at the 11 here. We cannot tell from the number 11, but we have to tell from the 2 and 1. He has inherited the capital A from 2, but his father, his father cannot give any other than small a. So this male has to be capital A, as we said before, capital A, small a capital A small a. Individual 14 is normal, so it has to be small a small a. This pedigree, is it dominant or recessive? How can I tell? I have to look at this small family here in the pedigree. The parents are normal and they have an affected child. This child has at least one affected allele, and this allele must have been inherited from the parents. So the parents must have the allele for the condition, but the parents, they don't show this condition. If they must have the allele for the condition and they do not show it, this means the allele is there and it's hidden. This means it's recessive. So in this case, it is recessive. And that's a rule. When an affected child has a normal parent, then the allele responsible for the condition is recessive. Let's look at this pedigree. Is this one dominant or recessive now? Where do I look? I look at this family. The parents, both of them are affected. While they have one child, number seven, this child, number seven, is normal. 
assume it is recessive. If it was recessive, so the parents, in order to show the disease, it has to be double recessive and assume that small a or small n is the allele for the disease. This would be small n, small n, and this would be small n, small n, if it was recessive again. And in this case, no other options. Each one of the parents has to give one small n, and this child would be small n, small n, and affected for sure, 100%. But as you can see, this is not the case, right? So my assumption is wrong. And the allele responsible for the disease is dominant. And since it is dominant, I now assign, let's say, capital A for the dominant allele and small a for the recessive. And this has to be heterozygous, both of them, in order to have small a, small a here, normal. So a rule, when affected parents have a normal child, then the allele responsible for the condition is dominant. It cannot be normal if the parents have recessive alleles. It has to be dominant, so they are heterozygous. They can pass on the recessive normal allele to their child. Another example here. Hemophilia is a sex-linked disorder in which blood takes a long time to clot. The diagram is a pedigree diagram showing the inheritance of hemophilia. Is a sex-linked disorder. This means on the X chromosome or Y chromosome. The normal allele is X capital H and the hemophilia is X small h. Look at this pedigree. Is it dominant or recessive here? Dominant or recessive? Look at this one. It tells me this is recessive. It is recessive. It is recessive because how come this child is having the condition? It has to be inherited from the parents and the parents are not showing this condition. So the allele is hidden in the parents and it is recessive. So let's try to assign, assign the genotype. Since XH, we have the male has XY, only one X. So this X must be X small h, otherwise it would be normal. This male is normal male, so this XY will be X capital H and Y, because it's normal, it doesn't show the disease, so it has to have the normal allele. The female here, the female here has two X chromosomes, as we said before in the previous video, and since the male has inherited X chromosome, which has the disease, this means it inherited it from the mother. So the mother must have X small h. And the X, other X, if it was X small h as well, this mother won't be normal. And that's why it has to be X big h, X small h. Codominance. Codominance is the case where both alleles are expressed in the heterozygous state. If we look at these two cows, one of them is red and the other is white, and the offspring that they produce is roan color. And you can see clearly that we have both colors appearing in the offspring. You see clearly here we have the red appearing and the white appearing. So none of them is dominant of the other on the other. Both of them are expressed. And since both of them are expressed, this is what we call co-dominance. Co means same. Co means they have the same level. So co-dominance is the case where both alleles are expressed in the heterozygous state. And Another form of codominance, when you have an intermediate form, like when I cross a red flower with a, with a white flower, you get something in the middle, pink. In some cases, they refer to this as incomplete dominance, but for IGCSE level, we consider them codominance. So crossing red and white, giving something in the middle as if you are mixing the red color with the white color. Both of them are there and they give me a pink color. So this is codominance. Alleles for the ABO blood types are a good example of codominance. IA refers represents the blood type or the allele that codes for blood type A. IB represents the allele for B, and the IO represents the allele for O. A and B are codominant, and both are dominant over O. So IO is recessive, A is dominant, B is dominant, both are dominant. This means they are codominant. 
So the genotype referring to the phenotype. If the genotype is IAIA or IAIO, both will give me a blood type A. If it's IBIB or IBIO, this will give me blood type B. And if it was IAIB, since they are codominant, this will give me a blood type different from A, different from B. This is AB. This means blood type A is there or the antigens A are, are there and the antigens B are there. If it was IOIO, this will give me a blood type O. It's recessive. This pedigree shows the inheritance of blood types. The mother is of blood type AB and the father is of blood type O. What are the possibilities of, uh, what are the possible blood types of individual one? How do we work out this? In this case, what I have here, only one possibility from the father, which is IO. From the mother, I have two possibilities, IA or I. B. So if we cross them, I A I O 50% and I B I O 50%. So here I have 50% blood type A because A is dominant over O and 50% blood type B. The ratio here is 1 1. Here we reach the end of the lesson of inheritance, part 1 and part 2. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel to get more videos.